Hey Floss Tube. This is Janet from Trixie Stitches. Uh, let's see, I'm here to do, I'm going to do a tag later on, a pearl tag from the Queen of Starts. Uh, I have some stash and I'm just going to show a couple widths and then I actually have, honest to God, a FFF, fully finished frame, everything. Uh -oh. Okay. So, what's been going on the last month? Hmm. So, I would have been here in do, 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 January. Probably. Yeah. Beginning of January. Still looking for a house to rent. We live in a part of California that, well, all of California is expensive. But where I live, it's a small town that they've built up is all, you know, as far as they can build it. So now they're building up, which is horrible. But it makes it even more expensive. And because the market is still down, people aren't selling their houses or moving out of their houses to rent their other ones. So, or, or buying, did I say that? Um, so yeah, the rentals are few and far between and you know, you go to look at one, it's just been on, you know, Zillow or Craigslist or whatever, and you go there and there's 30 people waiting to see it. <laughs> and so we just haven't had any luck yet, but we're still hoping for the best and just keep on plugging away and hope I don't have to move into an apartment. Um... And let's see what else. Oh, I had a sick doggie. Oh, she's been sick. She had um, like pancreatitis and her liver was going bad. Her stats were really high, dangerously high. And they put her on this medicine and uh, thankfully it worked and she's doing better. Um, that was just the other day. I thought, oh God, we're going to hear the bad news, you know, because she's like 10 years old now. and. My little Shih Tzu, Daphne. So, but she's doing better and we're happy. Not ready to lose her yet. Um, and then what else? Hmm. It's only getting close to the beginning of March, but April, the beginning of April is the Mirabilia Minion Retreat in Ohio, Cincinnati. So, I gotta start getting they do a mystery box and give you a bunch of, you know, get something the color red or get something that's ocean themed or, you know, every year it's a different, um, like six or ten different things to put into a box and then somebody picks yours and then you get theirs and so, so it's fun but it's always, you know, what am I going to come up with this year? What nifty kind of thing am I going to find? So that hunt will begin soon. And let's see. Um, what am I going to start with? Excuse me. Ginger ale. Um, I think I'll start with um, some whips. And then I have a story to go with one of the whips. And my finish. Um, so this is one whip that has been put away, but I dug her out because I want to start working her again on her again soon. This is uh, at the Met, so that's where I am on her now. Of course, I can't tell what you're seeing or not. So yeah, she's gorgeous and. Um, the first time I saw the pattern, I instantly went, she's got to be on red fabric. Because when I saw At The Met, I thought, well, I didn't even read the title, you know, At The Met, duh. She's at the theater. Um, but before that, I just, what clicked in my brain right away was red flocked wallpaper. You know, in those old time movie theaters that they had. There's some, some still around. But 
so that was my vision of her, was her standing there by this really luxurious red, deep red um, wallpaper and, you know, the, the sconces on the wall, the gaslight and stuff. So that was my inspiration for her. But so I basically almost have the bottom done, but then, you know, got her whole bodice and top part and then the, I don't know what you call that she's standing under not a gazebo, it's just an arch, I don't know. So there's that, and let's see, what's the other one? Do, do, do. Where'd it go? E. Hold on a second. Um, okay, and then I have my, oops, sorry. Sorry about that, I hit it. Um, my Chatelaine, White Nights in Russia. No. White Nights in St. Petersburg? Yeah, White Nights in St. Petersburg. Um, thought I'd just say in Russia. But it's a very big Chatelaine. It'll be three by three feet when it's done. And not much progress since the last time you saw it because I have been working on other things. Um... Yeah, so I need to get to work on this one, too. But this is what I have so far. Really love all the... It's, to me, it's fun. I like working with the metallics. I know I'm weird. Um, but all the silks and just... You know, all that glitter come together. It's pretty. And the beads. And let's see. Oops. Hold on again. I gotta grab one thing and five things fall. Um <laughs> I have to show you this. This is funny. If I can find the pattern, there it is. Okay, so, <clears throat> um, a few months ago I had a new niece born, number 39, I think, and one is due today. Um, but her name's Ruby, and I thought, okay, I'm going to make a little, you know, um, what do you call it? baby announcement thing and so I picked this one by Sam Sarah and it's called sweet sweet babe so, very cute and I was just gonna take it and take the sweet sweet babe out and then put um, her name and date in instead well it could have gone here but I kind of wanted to put sweet sweet Ruby there instead Anyway, so my first start was on, I think it's a light natural. I got like four squares done of that little basket weave in there. Oh, I'm flipping you off, aren't I? That's lovely. Um, <laughs> so I started that little basket weave, and then I thought, nope, that's not going to work. It's just, it's too light. It blends with the fabric too much. And see those four little squares so I went, nope I'm gonna need a darker fabric so I started what did I do with it <laughs> okay so I started it again this time on, I think this is hazelnut, something like that. And I got this far. Gotten all the, the basket weaving part done there and most of the heart and the sun and started a flower. But 
there is like, I don't know how many hand dyed threads on this. Excuse me. And after like two weeks, I was just getting worn out with it, you know, because using the hand dyed floss, although I love it, it takes you twice as long because you have to do each stitch one at a time. And then, especially in this basket weave part, there's like maybe eight or nine different colors of those little squares. You know, they're all very similar, but just a little bit different. And ugh, I just got frustrated. I got tired and frustrated. It wasn't happening. And, you know, I wanted to be working on my other stuff, but I wanted to get it done. So I said, screw it. Mm -hmm. I put that aside. I said, I'm going to dump that one for now and do something simpler. Um, faster, I should say. Not necessarily simpler, but faster that I could get done. And so I changed to... Hold on a second. I didn't plan this very well. And what I did with it. Oh, it's probably out of my reach. Anyway, it's one of those um, ooh, chalkboard designs that you get at Walmart. It's really cheap, like four or five dollars. And it said, um, all you need is love. Love is all you need. From the Beatles song. And I thought, oh, okay, that's cute. It's just, it just has white thread on it. You know, it's chalkboard, white color, obviously, as the chalk. I thought, I can get that done quick. You know, and just change it around. And instead of putting the, the last line of, let's see, all you, let's see, all you need is love. Yeah, taking out Love is All You Need and putting her info in there instead, or her name. And so much better. Got it done in like a week. I took it in to get framed at Aaron Brothers Art Mart, and they had it done in a day. You know, I, I lace the back and I get that all done. So all they're doing is just using the mats, getting the mats done and in the frame. And I buy an already made frame, so it's cheaper. Um, so, here's that. Sorry, it's still the paper is it up. Sorry, noisy. Yeah, I just love it. So, here's the finish. is all you need is love her name is Ruby Renee and then I jazzed it up a little by putting those abalone stars in there that I just had um, her mother loves stars um, so just a little extra thing and then I took I didn't put it on the um, little cheap piece of black Ada it came with um, and like that so I just picked a, this is a, I don't remember the name of it but it's it's a, by Stephanie hand dyed fabrics by Stephanie so in purples instead again her mother's favorite color and I don't know if you can probably not oh sorry the light but it's kind of a satiny um, outside matte and that kind of lilac color I just love it it's so pretty so, now I've got to box that up very safely with a lot of padding and mail it to Los Angeles. And, but yay! A finish, yay! I got a finish. It's a great thing about doing little things like that. You get something accomplished quick and it's like, oh yeah, I did something. And, let's see, oh, and then once I finished with that, I was kind of, I don't know, 
kind of not in the mood to stitch. I do that after I have a finish, I, even if it's small or large, whatever. Once I'm done with it, I kind of get in this funk where it's like, well, I could start something new now, you know, I can take out a whip. And I usually end up ho-humming around for a week or two weeks, trying to figure out what I want to do with myself. Um, so I finally, well, let me take this off here. I finally got off my butt and decided, okay, I need to work on Sorry, you can't see all of this. Um, this is red. And it's it's still in the, uh, the bars, so, you know, you're only seeing half of it. But I basically got most of the bodice done of her dress. And then I have all of the bottom done. And so I'm working on the big bustle bow part on the side of her dress. And then I can go on to her upper area. But, so this is, let's see, I'm not sure I've turned right. This is red so far. Can't tell if you see. So I'm working on this part, which is the, the bow part, or bustle, whatever you call it. And again, she's just gorgeous. She's the sexiest Red Riding Hood ever. Love her. So I'm hoping if I can get myself really motivated, uh, maybe I can finish her in the next month. Probably won't happen, but you know, a girl can dream. Uh, let's see. Oh, and then let's see for, sorry I'm all over the place, as usual, I can't keep a sentence together or my thoughts or anything. So, these are a few purchases from the Stash Unload site. I was doing really good and not buying anything and now I fell the wagon. So here's a Prairie Boon, it's called Hannah. Nordic looking to me, but I'm not sure what the base of it is. I'll have to look and see if it says in the info. I don't see anything so far, but maybe on the inside it says. And this is Sisters and Best Friends um, little strawberry fruit salad sampler, and this is strawberry. And, oh gosh, this is from Sampler Cove. Forgive me, I'm going to butcher the name. Siren JD. If you know the right way to pronounce that, you can tell me. I thought that was cool. I didn't, I wouldn't do that on black. I won't do anything on black hard. Um, and then this By the Bay Needle Art Pomegranate Hill. I've been wanting this one so when I saw it on the stash side I went okay I'm gonna go ahead and get it. In my part of the woods we have there's lots of pomegranate trees or bushes. Um, lemon and oranges they're just kind of native you know around here. They're all over the place. Um, let's see what else. Oh, I got a goodie in the mail from my friend Leslie. It's got the fabric of the month from Under the Sea Fabrics, but then she put my birthday present in it and she said I can't open it till March 6th. That's, you know, almost a week away, which is really mean to me package for Gile. I promise. I won't open it. 
but it is kind of cool and not let me open it. Um, sorry, I'm reaching here. I got a few needle minders for minding my minders. Um, I love these. They're all these retro ones. The Love Boat, Charlie's Angels, two of my favorite shows. And Hogwarts. Of course, I love Harry Potter. The love boat. I know I'm aging myself. And Charlie's Angels. If you don't like Charlie's Angels. And I'm talking about the original TV show, not the movies. Awesome. And then... Let's see. I got the stash on mode two. No, no, no. This is a point. Sorry. I digress. For my stash. For my stash. For my LNS, I got um, this little Mill Hill Autumn Harvest. It's supposed to be a magnet, but I'll probably make a little ornament out of it. It's called Grandpa's Tractor. Oh, sorry, the glare. That's so cute. That's just really nostalgic for me because I lived on a little farm that was my grandfather's and, you know, he had the red tractor and we went riding on it and picked blackberries and strawberries and all that stuff. And then I got these two Mill Hill kits. These are the Spring Series. Although it seems like they should be called the Ocean Series. This one is the Starfish. I know I'll swap the paper out to do on fabric. And my favorite one, the Sand Dollar. Yeah, I'll have to see if there's any other ones in that series besides just the starfish and the sand dollar. Um, let's see. Um, um, um. Okay. I have a bunch of stuff here that I have to tell you this story. At my LNS, they had a sale the last week. There, and it wasn't like their old stuff. It was from a customer, a lady who decided just whatever midpoint in her life that okay I'm not going to do cross stitch anymore I'm going to do needlepoint great but that's a big but she had literally thousands of patterns there were one and a half inch binders and there probably was at least 50 of them full of patterns from magazines and you know just regular patterns and then she had a huge box full of boxes full of kits and then she had she only stitched on Ada which is a bummer for me but hundreds of pieces of Ada Hundreds. I mean, and many of duplicate colors. There was just, a, you know, this was beyond, you know, oh, sable, you know, stitch acquired beyond life expectancy. This was hoarder territory. I mean, I got a great deal on stuff, but it was just, you know, you walked in the door and I thought there'd be, you know, a little table with some stuff on it. And it was like the whole LNS was just taken over. It was nuts. Oh, and she had those big, you know, like they usually have in LNSs, those DMC cabinets that hold the flosses. There was like six of those, and they were full of floss. Not like one or two in a little, in one of the little spaces, but stocked full. I wish I could have bought them, but, you know, even at that great discounted price, I think they were like $45 each. That would have been like $650 for all of them. It was a crazy good price, but, you know, I just didn't have that chunk of money to get them. But, wow, it was just insane what this woman had. 
So, but I did buy a couple of the binders full of stuff and then a couple of um, uh, kits and stuff, you know, some loose stuff. Um, well, this, this isn't from her. Sorry, this is just me. I'll us another one. It's a... Uh, by Beck, Backbird, not Blackbird, Backbird designs um, called Sisters, mm -hmm. and there's like um, maybe like four patterns in it, five something like that. Sorry, I think that one's cute, and I saw that one stitched, so that's what made me buy the book. That's cute, and, and then, okay, so these are from that sale, from that lady. This is Gingerbread Garden Sampler by Victoria Sampler. I'm usually not a big um, band sampler person, but that's just really cute. I would love to do that for Christmas. And then... Show you the craziness this I got this kit for five dollars and it's an anchor it's called sepia cockerel it's just really gorgeous like it says it's all in sepia tones and stuff so it looks like an old photograph really pretty and all skeined um, all skein floss and then the Ada in there for it. Five bucks. How can I pass that up? And then I got this one. It's uh, from Dimensions Gold. Another one I've seen in the past that I really love. It's called the Exquisite Lily Sampler. So... pretty. Love lilies. And let's see. Sorry, I got a stoop here again. Let's see. This one is some graceful wings, some butterflies. And sorry, I got a box here. Um, another one with butter. These are really colorful, kind of like stained glass butterflies. Um, da, 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 da. And there's a couple Teresa Wenzlers. And this one is Teats, Castle, and Dragon. And castle sampler and another five dollar kit I got and I know this is a very expensive one it's uh, Santa's sleigh again brand new all the stuff in it five dollars and, and then there's like two binders I bought that had all of these fairy things in it that a friend of mine Cassie um, wants to do for her daughter's room and they're you've probably seen these the DMC flower fairies um, so there's like one, two, three, four. I got four of these for her, and but there's also one called Flower Fairies that's just the pattern, like that. And there's probably I won't show them all because there's just too many. There's one, there's sixteen of those. You know, just all different flower fairies. So pretty. 
I got it for like $4. Um, the difference with the first ones, the little packages, the kit has, it's like you can see the Ada in there is like pre-printed. And then you add the floss, it's like detail around it. So. so I got those for her. And then there was another couple kits. These are just bigger ones like that. That's not the printed Ada, it's just regular. And Poppy Fairy. And this is one, this is actually a little boy. But I really wanted this one because, and this is the whole kit, because I really love hollies. I grew up with a holly tree, which is unusual. So it's just, they're a nice memory in my childhood. So I saw that one and had to have it. And yeah, like I said, however many it was I said a minute ago, all of that box for $4 crazy. It's craziness. I love it. I got some good stuff. So, um, let me see. Hold on. How do you guys drink soda through a, doing a video and not burp? I can't do it. Okay. So I'm going to do a new tag the pearl tag from the Queen of Starts. So, let's see. Oops. Um, it's got five questions. Number one, what irritates you the most about cross stitch in general and why? Mm, I'd prob probably have, mm, yeah. Probably the, the just the time it takes. You know, it's a tedious craft. It's it's not a quick thing to do. Um, you know, and, and that's also what I love and what irritates me about it is, you know, the tedium, you know, when you just want to sit and be quiet and think, it's great. When you're kind of in a fidgety mood and you can't concentrate, it's bad. But... Number two, what designer irritates you the most and why? Ooh. Uh, I probably have to say Joan Elliott. But it's, again, it's one of those answers that the reason it irritates me is the reason I love it. And with hers, it's she does gobs of back stitching. You know, if you know the difference between the patterns of uh, Joan Elliott and Nora Corbett or Mirabilia, you know, they're both very intricate to designers. You know, they're, they're ladies and they're fairies and all that, and mermaids. They're very intricate. But Joan's, she uses a lot, a lot of backstitch. And, again, it's like, that's makes the process even longer and more tedious, but it's what makes things really pop and come together. So, you know, it's a two-handed, uh, two-sided coin. Um, what stitches irritate you and why? Oh, hmm, probably the queen stitch. Um, mostly because it's a, it's not horribly complicated, but there's, there's many, you know, what's the word? Mm -hmm -hmm. It's just a tedious kind of stitch, the way you have to do it. It's not a quick, you know, doing a, doing a Smyrna or doing an eyelet or whatever. It's just kind of repetitive going in a circle kind of thing. But uh, queen stitches, it's like you got to lay a thread, and then you got to go through and pull that thread back here, and then do another one, and pull that thread back here, and then you do one in the middle, and then you do one to the left side, and again, 
to where it builds this really cool looking stitch, but getting there is real tedious. That seems to be the word of my whole thing here. Um, oops. Okay, you can. Accidentally turned the video on. Um, oops, hold on. I accidentally hit off of the page. Okay, so that was the stitch. Um, what irritates you about non-stitchers? Um, probably, you know, just the judgment of it's a silly hobby or it's an old lady's hobby. Um, something your grandma did. Um, by the way, my grandma didn't cross-stitch. Um, yeah, just they kind of belittle it, you know, and make it seem like a silly little or stupid or why do you waste your time on that? Um, or when they say, gosh, you know, that's really pretty. You should sell that. You can make money doing that. It's like, no, you can't. It's too time consuming and there's no way. You can't mass produce cross stitch. Uh, so that's that one. And then the last one is, what irritates you about other stitchers? Ooh, that's a minefield. Um, gosh, I'd probably say, um, <laughs> I can be politically correct. Um, sometimes the drama in it from ladies that are old enough and smart enough to know better. You know, it goes along with the the thing of being online and people saying things because they have basically anonymity. Um, being out on the internet or on a page or whatever. Facebook or whatever it is, say something or act in a certain way that they wouldn't do in normal real life in front of a person, you know, um, be it rude or mean or just nasty. Um, but a lot of it is kind of, you know, it's almost like junior high stuff, drama. You go, stop, you need to quit that, you know. So yeah, that's about as far as I'll go with that one. Um, <laughs> so that's it for the tag. Uh, where am I at here now? Ooh, already 37 minutes. Okay, long video. Um, so that's all I have for now. Uh, I'm going to try to get a video made before I leave, beginning of April, to go to the Mirabilia Minion Retreat. Yay, always lots of fun shenanigans. Trixie has lots of fun. Um, the only bummer this year is that because I, you know, I buzzed my hair off and it's just growing back. I don't have the power of making my bouffante, which I would have to show you the pictures. You know, so can't do it. But yeah, there's pictures on the internet of me with a bouffant. It's okay, and a lot of blue eyeshadow. Um, anyway, off course there. Um, yeah, so I'll try to make a video before I go, but if not, I may try to do what, you know, D Stitcher did and some of the other ladies with the, um, uh, the vlog, the daily vlog, uh, when they were in England or the Haid, or is it Heed? That's pretty. Um, for the retreat, you know, where you kind of have little snippets of what's going on during the day, during the whole thing. So, I don't know, I might do that. We'll see. So, I hope I haven't forgotten anything. Hard to say, there's so much stuff in this room and I don't have my glasses on, so I can't see. Hold on. Oh, there you are. I take them off though because I'm so close. I hope you appreciate that I put makeup on for you guys because you know, I try. Anywho, uh, yeah, I'm 
babbling. Okay. Well, I will see you guys, if not in another video in a month. Maybe I'll see you at the retreat. Talk to you later. Bye.